Hi, I'm Pastor Robert Axton. I'm so glad that you have joined us today to explore God's Word together. We are continuing today our study that we had begun in our last lesson as we begin to talk about Lot, the nephew of Abraham, and that uh, the Lord had sent two angels to that city to find out whether the wickedness that was coming up before him was so, and if so, there was going to be destruction. But Abraham had uh, uh, talked to God, and he said, Lord, would you spare that city for ten righteous people? And the Lord said, I will. And so when the angels came, Lot found them, and he invited them into his house. They said, no, we're going to stay on the street. They were there to find out about the wickedness of that city. And yet he said, no, you come into my house. And he fed them. And while before, just before they went to bed, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 19 and verse 4, it says, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, would come past the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. And so this was this uh, uh, invitation uh, from the wickedness of this city and the wicked men that were there. Bring these strangers out. We want to know them. We want to uh, have a, a sexual encounter with them. And, and uh, Lot goes to the door and he shuts it behind them. And this is where we pick up today. And he says to them in verse 7, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. And I, I see that there's something that uh, is, is just obvious um, in, in Lot as he is trying his best to protect uh, the, the, the angels, if you would. Uh, and listen to what he says, though. He says, Behold now, in verse 8, I have two daughters which have not known man. That means they were virgins. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do you to them as is good in your eyes. Take them and use them. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. They said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man even lot and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled lot into the house to them and shut the door. And the Bible says they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness so that they wearied themselves to find the door. They still kept trying to find the door. That's how wicked their hearts were. That's why, how determined they were. Oh, I tell you, that was a very uh, defiant spirit. And, and the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides? Son-in-law, thy sons, thy daughters, whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath, hath sent us to destroy it. Do you realize they came here to make that decision? They said, we'll make that decision on the streets. And Lot said, no, you come into my house. And the decision was made at the door of a righteous man's house. Wow. That shows how wicked a place can become. That shows the danger so much that, that the Lord didn't have to go to the streets to decide it. He stood in a righteous man's house and realized that it was about to enter that house. And that's where the decision was made. And so now the angels say, you go find your sons. You have daughters, daughter, you got son-in-laws, go find them. And Lot, no doubt, he became frantic and, and it's nighttime and he goes to his son-in-laws and his daughters, uh, which were married to his son-in-laws. And they, he said, get up, uh, get out of this place. No doubt he's knocking on the door and he's trying to encourage them. You've got to get out of here because... The Lord's going to destroy this place. But listen to verse 14, the last of that verse. 
but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. Wow. Remember, Abraham said, if there's just 10 righteous, we just spare that city. He's probably counting. I know. And his daughters have married and, and he's counting. And yeah, surely there'll be 10 and God's going to spare this. But when Lot goes there, he did not even have the influence enough to be able to save his own family. He didn't have the influence enough to be able to say, come on, you've got to get right. I tell you, there is a cry that goes out today and we need to make sure we don't lose our influence even with our own families. We need to be sure that we don't lose that influence and encourage them to serve the Lord because the Lord is coming soon and there is going to be a judgment that's going to come on this world. And I, everywhere I go and I talk to people, it seems like people know there is a sense there's something in the air that just makes people to feel it, that surely there's something big phenomenal that's about to happen. You say, well, it's the coming of the Lord. Yes, but also there's going to be judgment that's going to come. And that's why, my friend, uh, people are feeling this and they know this. They see the things that are happening all around us. And uh, we need to be aware that the Lord, his eye is upon us and he knows his word is going to come to pass. And the Bible says when the morning arose in verse 15, I'm in Genesis 19 and verse 15, when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. How many was that? That made four people. There was not 10 that could be found. And while he lingered, oh, why are you lingering? Why are you staying here? You can get so attached to the world. You can get so attached to the things. You know, there's things that's not evil in themselves. It's just stuff, but it's going to burn up someday. Don't become so attached to life and, and the things and the pleasures of this world that we uh, forget God. We don't have time for the Lord. We don't have time. It's, it's not an evil thing to have the, the things you've got in your garage and, and the things that you take to the lake and, and all of our equipment for our sports. There's not evil in that, but we can become so attached that we want to linger. I, I don't know if I want to leave this. Uh, why do I, Lord, don't come yet. I'm having too much fun. Do you realize the scripture tells us at the end of Revelations, the Bible says, the writer says, even so come, Lord Jesus. There was something inside the people of God that cried out, come on, Lord. I'm not attached to this world. We find Lot in verse 16, while he lingered. The men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. They brought him out of the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed." And Lot is saying, oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, if, the, if thy servant has found grace in thy sight and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, I don't want to go to that mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. There's a city near us and it's just a little place. And he's now attached to the city. And, and, and he says, let me escape there. And it's just a little one. And the angel, of course, told him, says, I've accepted thee concerning this thing that I will not overthrow that city, this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. And the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Now, it's interesting uh, to note that when uh, uh, 
Lot uh, went to Zoar. Later in verse 30, it says, Lot went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him. He ended up going to the mountain anyway, for he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. You notice his wife is not there. Why? Because the Bible says, I'll start with verse 24 in Genesis 19, verse 24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Do you know Jesus made reference to Lot's wife? He said, remember Lot's wife. Oh, she looked back. It must have been so hard for her. That's all we can fathom is she must have looked back because she was missing all the things that I've had and all my furniture and all my house and it was the best I've ever had and it's been destroyed. And she looked back. She looked back and she became a pillar of salt. I, I tell you that it's the end of that story, but yet it's not the end. It was the end for her. And, and uh, I tell you, it, it behooves us to be ready. When I have a book that uh, talks about the, uh, the destruction of Sodom and how that they have gone and they have looked at that area where they believe Sodom was. And because Sodom was wiped out, it was gone. And there's just some little trace of, of uh, archaeologists have been able to find and they've dug up and they have found uh, a, a, a green substance a, a glass-like substance, and, and uh, it's found in one other place in the world, and, and it's where an atomic bomb would be exploded and because the intense heat uh, and sudden heat just melted whatever the substance was, and it became this glass-like substance, and I'm sorry I don't have that name in front of me to tell you what it is, but, but uh, that is what happened to Sodom. It was, it was uh, uh, believed that there was like a meteorite that just nailed that city, and it just destroyed it in a moment, and it was like the hottest sand uh, just rained upon that place, and the explosion, the night of it, it was so instant, it was over. People had got up to go to work. Life was going to be uh, the same as it was yesterday, but suddenly it's over. I tell you, we need to be ready. When God says, I'm going to do something, he can do it. I've heard people say, well, if we can just deflect science, wants to deflect meteorites, they've got their eyes on those things. If we can just save ourselves, it sounds like it sounds like the Tower of Babel, just climb up. Let's save ourselves. We don't want to depend on God. The Lord said, I'll spare that city. He says, I'll deflect it. I'll protect. I tell you, put your trust in God. You don't need to walk in fear about what's going to happen today or tomorrow. Just live for God and be ready. God will protect you. And when the time comes, he'll take you out of this world. But oh, friend, we must be ready. Reach out to me if you would. Contact me either by Facebook or by email. I welcome that. I want to pray with you. Father, I pray that you would help us, Lord, to draw closer to you and to be ready. And we ask in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.